Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and welcome to the second issue of News From Scratch. The entire idea behind this, by the way, thanks for the name, is to take stories about world of game development that don't really justify their own video, uh, but kind of cover them all together in a single video. And today we've got three separate topics we're going to cover. We'll be looking at Phaser, we're going to be looking at the default game engine, and we're going to be looking at Verge 3D. All three of those because of new releases. And learn from lessons from the last one, check down below, I should have timestamps for when we talk about each individual subject. And I'm also going to talk about them in order that I arrange them in the title and in the graphics. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense than what I did last round. Again, your feedback on how to do these videos is always appreciated. All right, first off, we've got Phaser. Phaser is an HTML5 game framework. I've long been a fan of, Fra of Fraser. Oh, I love Fraser. Uh, I've always loved Phaser. It, it's kind of just that nice mix of clean, easy to understand code. It kind of hits that whole X and A vibe for me, but it's for HTML5 game development. And they just released Phaser 30, um, sorry, 3.23. Uh, and there's a whole lot in this one. Now keep in mind, there's a new version of Phaser, Phaser 4 actively under development. So this is the more mature uh, version of Phaser, the one that you would probably use in production if you were going to go with Phaser. And we've got some nice things here. The, um, the biggest one isn't really sexy by any means, but it's important, especially for open source projects. And that is they have 100% complete JS doc coverage of the entire API. That's every single property, function, class, and method has documentation, not only just the public APIs, but basically all of them. Um, so they've got everything there. Uh, as a result, this mammoth effort has migrated down into the TypeScript definitions, which are more accurate than ever as well. So if you are using Phaser with TypeScript, it should get better. If you are using Phaser in general, there is now better documentation. I think we can call that a win. Now the big new thing here is the rope game object. We'll see it in action in a little bit. Um, allows you to create sprites with long strips of vertices that can be independently colored and manipulated, allowing for some really lovely effects. Uh, there's also a new camera rotation effect, updates for arcade physics, new data manager functions, tiled import tweaks, and lots more. So let's head on over and take a look at Rope in action. So this is one of those things that really shines about Phaser, is they have an absolute ton of examples for everything they do. They've got this sandbox, you come in here and you can actually see uh, various different examples of Rope being used. So here is one such example. So you're seeing, uh, it's really slow for some reason, but you get the idea of what things are about. I also don't know how to get out of here. <laughs> I would have thought it was escape, but oh, there it is. I got to scroll down. All right, there it's loaded up. You can see it going on. Hey, let's go back one and we'll look at this one instead. This one actually kind of shows it off a little bit more. So rope is a lot like, a, I don't know, kind of like a freeform definition latest kind of or lattice kind of approach to things. Uh, but you can see the kind of special effects it enables you to do. Now, let me just close that down so that my browser isn't chugging. And here we've got the default game engine. Now, I got to admit, this one is really minimal in terms of the new side of things in that they have a new release. Uh, default 1.2.168 was just released. Not a ton new there. I will of course link to all of the relevant links in the, the document down below so if you want to check this out. Truth of the matter is the default engine is updated pretty much bi-weekly. Uh, so we got into a couple of nice new features on this one. Uh, URLs now have the ability to target so you can set target underscore blank so if you're opening up in a browser you have more fine-tuned control over how you open that browser and there is now an option to let the engine run well iconified so when you've got it minimized down to an icon you can have it keep running. Now as I mentioned earlier on default updates quite periodically so I will actually quite periodically uh, quite often so if you're interested I will I will link to their documentation so you see here they've got a beta line going and then a, a released line going and you know the last released was 29 days ago so these are pretty consistent and then beta was just six days ago uh, in the beta you can get an idea of what's going on there as well and that's kind of how this change came about it would have been in the beta so now the beta is live and so on by the way if you've never checked out the default game engine uh, I'm actually a real big fan of it. It's from King, uh, the, the game maker King. Uh, it's completely free, but it's not open source. That's kind of one point of contention. It is cross-platform. I've done a couple of videos on it. I will link one of the videos in the linked article down below. So if you want to check out and learn more about the default game engine, I've actually done a couple of tutorials here. I'll link to that as well. So if you want to check it out, it's great, especially for mobile 2 and 2.5D two and games. It's powered by Lua. uses a really unique messaging system. I, I would recommend, if you're looking for a 2D game framework, but you want a full tooling environment, and for some reason, you know, something like uh, Godot or Unity or Game maker doesn't work for you, Default is definitely one to check out. I, I, again, I've been a fan of Default for quite a while, so it has my endorsement there. So again, 
pretty minor updates on the whole, but yeah, there was a new release, just letting you know. And then finally, we get into Verge 3D. Now, Verge 3D, I did a video about a little while back. Basically, uh, it's kind of like stencil meets... Um, a Blender game engine, more or less. It's a, a visual programming interface for adding logic to Blender scenes. They've also got Verge for 3D Studios Max, and they've got Verge for Maya. But we're talking about it today because Verge for Blender, uh, Verge 3.1 for Blender was just released. Now, again, I will link to the article I did, or the, the hands-on with Verge 3D. Uh, I did one about two months ago, so it's not even that out of date. And you kind of give the idea, right inside of Blender, you can kind of uh, you, you model your scene or whatever, and then you've got this, uh, you know, corresponding website that's hooked up with it, or you can start adding game logic to it. Uh, so it's not super advanced for games as of yet, but there is a lot of functionality. Now, I mentioned earlier on uh, that it uses a stencil-like control system, and it really does. I, I guess this is more of a... Um, Oh, what is it called? Uh, scratch kind of a look. I think Scratch was probably the first one that took this approach, but it's getting more and more common. So here you can see kind of how the programming works. What we've got new in this particular release, well, we'll do it from the summary. Uh, so we've got uh, operating VR controller uh, operation. So if you've got VR headsets, uh, you can now use handset handsets. Is that right? Anyways, if you've got hand controllers for VR, you've now got the ability to work with them. Uh, features in new physics engine, including it's now ported to WebAssembly uh, on supported browsers. It makes it run substantially faster, and it makes the uh, physics engine's file size quite a bit smaller. We got new logic blocks for vector operations, faster image-based lighting modes, React.js and Vue.js templates, support for HTML5 pointer events in puzzles, and lots of stability improvements. Now, the release notes go into a ton of detail, so here you can see the new uh, controller management for your VR controllers. So if you're using this for, here you see, init, oculus controls, uh, traverse controls, flip through them, here's how you use them. And there's kind of how you program logic using Verge. It's pretty straightforward. You slot it in, if it fits, it works. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't work. Um, so new VR stuff there. Physics, as I mentioned earlier on, ported to WebAssembly, saw a pretty substantial uh, performance improvement there. They also have some new, um, there's a new on uh, before and on after simulation events in uh, their programming blocks. So you've got more fine-tuned control over how things are physics. Uh, a little bit more about VR examples. Some new puzzle blocks were added in. That's the name for their, their pieces here. Added to the number category, namely the create vector, set, get vector value, and vector math ones. Uh, Image-based lighting. Uh, pointer events, as mentioned, for HTML5, you got more fine-tuned control over the, the app you're generating, which, by the way, I guess ultimately Verge 3D is used to create web apps. It's um, it's from the team from Blender for Web, so if it looks really familiar to Blender for Web, some of those people you know split off and they created Verge 3D, so that's kind of the approach here. Well, so you got finer-tuned control over how the browser works, which, given that's your out, also, um, final output source, and that does make a lot of sense. So that's kind of it, and I will, uh, again, link that down below. If you want to check it out, there is a free evaluation version, so it's one of those things you can definitely uh, get a feel for what it's like. Uh, it's a couple hundred dollars if you want to buy it, though, so and Verge isn't cheap by any means, but uh, as you can see, it's a pretty big update for it, actually. So uh, if you wanted to get your Blender scene and get them running in a browser with the minimum amount of work, you know, you can also use something like the Armory Game Engine, but there you've got to do a lot more coding. you got to know things a lot better. Better, and you get probably tighter integration with Blender, but something like Verge, it makes the whole process, well, it's it's this hard. So that's kind of the, the process you are working with. So again, I will link to the video I did where I took hands-on with Verge just recently. So if you want to learn a bit more about that, you can. All right, so that is it. Uh, quick, So quick recap, we have the uh, phaser release, we have the default release, and finally, we have the Verge uh, 3D 3.1 for Blender release. Again, let me know what you think of this format of moving these you know, smaller news posts together into one solid video. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.